Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Conscious Cool Chic Radio with Molly McCord. Today is October 17th, 2018. Thank you for joining me where every Wednesday we talk about the astrology of right now. We talk about the planets, what they're doing, how they're conversing with each other, and how you might be feeling it in your world, as well as the intuitive messages that I receive as I open up and channel some of the energies that are coming through. I never know what's going to come through, and that's what makes this always interesting for me too. So thank you for joining me, and I hope that this program has been very helpful in supporting you through this year. Uh, This is a podcast, and you can always subscribe on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Stitcher, CastBox, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also follow along on YouTube where I upload these videos and you can listen there as well. So thank you for joining me. Today we are moving through the energies of sun in Libra. The sun is at 24 degrees of Libra. It is the only energy in Libra at this time. And in fact, the sun is moving away from some planets and moving towards other planets right now. And depending on how you read orbs in astrology, the sun would be what we call peregrine or peregrine, and that means it's all alone. Peregrination is when a planet does not have any aspects to another planet. Now, last week the sun was squaring Pluto, at 18 degrees and has moved away from that. Uh, The sun is approaching in opposition to Uranus at zero degrees of Taurus, and that will really be strong next week as we get to a very strong, powerful full moon in Taurus, which I will touch on a bit here later in the show. But when a planet is all alone, it feels left out of the party. And it's interesting when that is the sun. So the sun in Libra is not making any other aspects right now to other planets. So all these other planets are in a conversation together. And there's a lot going on with the other planets. But the sun in Libra is by itself. He's a bit like standing outside of the party looking in. And so he isn't recognized. He isn't seen. There's that sense of where do I fit in? And sometimes what happens is that energy tries to do more to get attention or tries to stand out. So it's rare to have this uh, in the sky. It's rare to have this in a chart. For example, if in your natal chart there is a planet that's left out of the conversation where it's not making any aspects to other planets, it might try to do more to get attention or to get its needs met. So right now with the sun at 24 degrees, it's going to be moving towards connections, uh, but it's not quite there yet. So it could have a sense of quiet. When the sun is, the sun in Libra at 24 degrees could feel quiet in your chart, um, but it depends, it might be making aspects in your chart. So it does depend on how the energies are working with you personally. But in the general sense, the sun is all alone right now. So then we look to its next energy, which is its ruler. The sun in Libra is ruled by Venus. Venus is currently in Scorpio retrograde at 8 degrees and has just made a connection, a conjunction to Mercury in Scorpio. These are the siblings. They are sibling energies, and they work together so well. They have a lot to say and share. Um, it's, it's actually a great energy when both Venus and Mercury connect. And in Scorpio, they want to go deeper. They talk about secrets, what's going on with you, how are you really feeling. Uh, because the sun in Libra is how we can show up in the world to share our energy with other people. And it's more civilized, it's more social, it's more aware of how the energy appears. It's where you get dressed up and you show up wearing the right attire to a party, for example. But then the Scorpio energy is where you get pulled aside in that party and a good friend asks, okay, you look great, but what's going on? I know something's happening for you right now. And that's when you open up and say, well, this is what's really going on. And you spill the beans and you share how you're really feeling. 
So this energy is quite strong right now where there are three planets in Scorpio that are asking us to really pay attention to our feelings, to what's happening in our inner world, under the surface. What is getting to you right now? I mean, you could have something that's triggering you or that's stirring up some parts of yourself that you thought were not there or you thought you were done with it. But it's getting triggered right now because Mercury at 11 degrees of Scorpio is squaring Mars at 13 degrees of Aquarius. And this is where you might want to lash out or you say words that you wish you hadn't said, that you wish you could take back. Mercury and Scorpio can have a very cutting tongue. It can just like slice right in there and say what it really feels and say what it really thinks. Uh, it, it can be brutal. But when this energy then comes up to a square with Mars and Aquarius, it can ruffle feathers. So there can be this aggression that comes out or some frustration. Uh, there could be something that triggers you. So just keep an eye on that for the rest of this week because it's going to possibly come up for you. It does depend on where these energies are in your chart. And these are in the fixed signs that are immovable. The fixed signs are where we don't want to budge, we dig in, we don't want to compromise, like this is how I feel, this is what I think, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, like nothing can sway you off course with these fixed signs. So with a lot of fixed signs going on right now, we can feel that. We can feel like I have to do this or I have to focus on this or this is what I'm really all about right now. It's, it's an energy of stabilizing. That's the bigger intention of how can you stabilize parts of yourself right now and how can you do that in a way that isn't about a reaction or sense of feeling threatened by another. And that's not always easy to do. Um, that can be easier said than done. But there can be a contentious feeling right now as Mercury squares Mars and neither want to budge. This square um, is going to be felt strongly the 18th, and the 19th of October. And so it could be that you need to wait to talk about some things and that you just need to give something time. If you are perhaps in a disagreement or a conversation with somebody and there doesn't look like there's a way through, give it some time and hopefully the tension will lessen a bit. Now, these three planets in Scorpio are meant to show us what we didn't see before, what has been in the subconscious or the psyche that you didn't realize. It's really about the undercover fears that we all hold in some areas of our lives, but we don't want to hold them. Um, we want to consciously and powerfully work through them. Now, fears is a giant category of potentials and possibilities. You can have big fears, you can have small fears, you can have all these different variations of it. And so the way to understand what comes up right now is to look at what within you created a fear that you just don't want operating within you anymore. And this is going to be a big theme for the next few weeks because the sun is going to go into Scorpio. Uh, that happens October 23rd. And then right after that, we have a very powerful full moon. And this full moon is in Taurus at one degree on October 24th. So the sun goes into Scorpio and it's making a conjunction to Venus Venus will be at four degrees of Scorpio, and both of those energies are going to be opposing the moon and Uranus in Taurus. So we have the energy of things shaking up. 
And I have a separate video for you on YouTube that goes through the chart of this lunation, of this full moon in Taurus. And that's to help walk you through the different energies and the conversation that's going on with the planets. But the most powerful energy in this full moon is actually Uranus. Uranus is currently at zero degrees of Taurus, and this is what is stirring up what has been stagnant and stuck. Uh, Uranus is the earthquake. It shakes. It rumbles. It gets things moving. It breaks it through. It shuts it down. It's explosive. It's electrifying. It's understanding something with lightning quick intelligence. It's that opening into the giant aha moments. And when Uranus is in Taurus, Taurus is our values, our personal money, the money you own, the money you make, what you have in the bank. It's what has meaning to you, what you buy and accumulate. And all of that, that layer of energy is all about how you value yourself and how you see the worth in who you are. So self-worth, self-love, self-value are all strong Taurus energies. And with Uranus moving through this part of the zodiac, it asks us to look at what we took for granted, to look at what we didn't realize, to look at where we were just in autopilot and not aware of where these energies can go higher, can be restructured, can be reworked. And Uranus is what shakes up the matrix, the energy fields. It's where things get jolted. I'm seeing right now the image of a pyramid um, jolt getting shaken up. It's where structures have been in place and things have been settled and firm and solid. And Uranus in Taurus comes through and literally provides that earthquake. So it shakes up the energies that need to be dismantled and to fall away. And when we have a full moon with this powerful energy signature, it really brings up finances and money where we put our money. Uh, Both Taurus and Scorpio are financial signs, financial energies. And with Venus, retrograde conjunct the sun that really brings up money and venus is actually the ruler of this full moon in taurus taurus is ruled by venus venus in scorpio is retrograde conjunct the sun so we have these similar themes the similar themes around money self-worth finances, how you feel stable, where you, how you make money, how you spend money. Uh, Scorpio is the money that we spend. It's what goes out. It can be through investments. It can be through debt. It can be through loans. It can be through your bills. A Scorpio is typically the money you owe other people, but it's also how you can make money with other people, such as mutual funds and investments and anything that you make an interest, you you make the interest off of something, right? This is all Scorpio stuff. Um, So these are big areas, and it's just one area. Finances are just one area that this full moon is illuminating. I think what's happening at a deeper level is it's really asking us to look at where we have felt fear about wealth. And not just wealth in monetary terms, but the wealth of your own energy field, the wealth of your own potential. And, and wealth, you know, it, it, it's prosperity, it's abundance, it's more than enough. And are you really tapping into that more than enough energy vibration? Because what I'm seeing now are these big energy waves that move all throughout the globe. Um, And I actually see this energy weaving through the matrix. And you can look at it as a ribbon, a ribbon of energy that is wealth, prosperity, abundance, and anything that you have learned to 
understand about this energy, okay? Because you might have other words for it too. But I see it as a ribbon that moves through the matrix and it comes through and it kind of opens up more possibilities and potentials. And there's a time right now of seeing things differently, of allowing the Uranus in Taurus, working with the moon, to open up where you have felt stagnant, stuck, fearful about money that you can make or how much you can have and how that is actually deeply rooted. Okay, so that pyramid I saw feels like the pyramid in the root chakra of how you feel safe in the world and grounded and connected and how anything there in that root chakra energy This is a pyramid that's like allowing something to open. And now I'm seeing the pyramid open up, like all three sides open up, and it reveals a flower blossoming. So you felt like you had to do something a certain way. You had to understand your energy, your potentials, your life in a certain way. And this full moon is asking you to please let go of those constructs and those limitations. And wherever one degree of Taurus is in your chart, whichever house placement is where you're being asked to break free. Okay? And it's a breaking free so that you can surrender this attachment. It's an attachment. That's Taurus. We get attached to certain things. We want certain things. We want to own them. We want to possess them. But it can be very unconscious within us of the limitations that are then applied to those attachments. So it's an opening up and a freeing of yourself. And so I see this pyramid opening in the root chakra, and it blooms into this gorgeous lotus flower. And then the center of the lotus flower is like a gold coin. There's like this gorgeous gold coin. So this is like really busting out of things that you've told yourself or you learned or you accumulated or you took on from other people, which is Scorpio. And it could very well be from the feminine energies in your life. And that's because of the moon, which is feminine, the moon conjunct Uranus, And Venus, which is feminine, conjunct the sun. So you have these two feminine energies here that are saying, what did you learn from either your mother, your sister, your aunt, your grandmother, a family member, people around you? Um, It can include your siblings, your peers, your girlfriends, the feminine energies, and that doesn't just mean gender. Uh, Men, of course, have feminine energy too. But how that feminine energy believed it was loved and how the definition of love can get smaller instead of bigger. And so it's opening up to loving yourself more because you can understand how you were taught certain things or you learned certain things from other people, again, Scorpio energies, based on what they learned. It's sort of like how the family lineage of unconsciousness can be passed down. And it's not intentional. It's, that's the thing, too. It's just how we've done things in the family or how I, was lear- how I learned to be in the world, how I learned to be a female, how I learned to show up with my feminine self, and whether or not that was safe. And those fears around being feminine, those fears around your feminine self, that's the Scorpio energy as well, is the fears that we have around feeling safe to express all of you. So do you see how there's many layers to this full moon? And it's big, and it just like cracks some things open that we've really been working through for a while. And we've been working through it since Jupiter went into Scorpio in 2017. And I'm actually going to find that date for you right here because um, this is going to accentuate that energy of when Jupiter entered Scorpio, and I need to grab my ephemeris here because I didn't have the year 2017 opened. Uh, So Jupiter went into Scorpio October 
2017. So a year ago, October 11th. So exactly a year ago. This full moon is bringing to light that part of your chart again. This full moon, again, it's on October 24th, is like cracking open how you had to shut down and kind of get in line for what you thought your life would be or what you thought you had to do to make money or what you thought your limitations were or what you th- – you know, it's like where where you felt – that you couldn't maybe follow a passion. With four planets in Scorpio, that passion is alive. That passion is still there. So look in your chart at where the Scorpio energies are because there will be the Sun and Venus in Scorpio as well as Mercury and Jupiter for this full moon. So the passion is still there. But where... Did the fears hold you back from going for it or believing in that passion, that desire? And now there's something opening up and blossoming and breaking free so that you can tap into these limitations and just dissolve them. So now that's why I'm feeling this ribbon of wealth (laughs) coming through. And you could just feel it you know, wrapping around you, removing those fears. I mean, it's a very um, perhaps silky, soft, easy energy that's meant to help you melt away, melt away these fears. And with this full moon, I would ask for that support because you can hold also those deeper fears around the finances, of not having enough, of not getting, um, of not making enough. But, but again, this goes back to that pyramid in the root chakra that understands that when you open up, literally like blossom and remove those constructs that are limiting, you know that you are more than enough. There's a more than enough energy that I feel is going to be downloaded. And that's essential right now because Jupiter is at 25 degrees of Scorpio. So four degrees left in Scorpio until it moves into Sagittarius on November 9th. And that right there is going to be a welcome transition because Jupiter and Scorpio is intense and emotional and it could feel like I'm in the dark, as am I making progress, is anything really moving? You can lose perspective on what you've been working on, transforming, trying to get through, trying to understand. Like even the word trying is not a great word because it just implies that there's always like effort being exuded and that you don't experience it. Like you're always it's always um just out of your reach. But when you're at that place of full ownership of I have enough, I am transforming, I have transformed, when you declare it in the present sense, tense, tense and sense, when you declare it in the present tense, when you understand that this is something that is true for you and you claim that, it also shifts the energy. And We have a lot of energy changes in the middle of November, which is quite interesting because not only does Jupiter move into Sagittarius November 9th, we're going to have Venus stationed direct at 25 degrees of Libra on November 16th. On November 16th, we also have Mercury stationing retrograde at 13 degrees of Sagittarius. Yes, another Mercury retrograde coming up in November. And then we also have Mars finally leaving Aquarius and going into Pisces the middle of November, November 15th and 16th. And then we have the nodes 
the North Nodes shifting the middle of November as well into Cancer. So we're really gearing up for the energies moving into new territory. And as always, we have to be in the present. We have to be in today. And in astrology, I know we always look ahead and we look at the next moon and the next transit and the next all that. But really, it's about today. No matter where you are, today is what matters. Being in the presence, being in your body, being in the mindfulness of your energy field right now. And I feel like part of why it's important to do the show even, or, or even to share with you these insights, is because now that you have the visuals, you start working with it. And you sense it. And it helps you to really own the energy in your life with greater consciousness. At least that's always my intention with this program. Um, that's why I've loved doing it for six years. It's because I know that it helps people consciously work with the energies of who they are and how they are evolving and growing. So as we move forward to this full moon, stay aware of those fears that come up. And stay aware of how they've held you back and that you can always make a new conscious choice to work with them powerfully and to not be sucked into the the former energies or the old ways of working with those energies. I know it's been a big year and we've had powerful eclipses. We've had big transits. We've had a lot of shifting going on. Um, and that's not going to change. It's not going to end. We get stronger, though, and we get better at it. Um, there's big energy shifts. I mean, you could argue for the, <laughs> for the remainder of time. But the big energy shifts that I see astrologically really go into 2027. And so the best thing we can do is every day take care of yourself, be mindful of your energy, do, you know, be mindful of what's coming up, of what needs to heal. In fact, I wanted to share with you that the most powerful people I know, um, my mentors, my friends, um, just people that I, you know, have known for years, they are always doing their healing work. It's not one and done. It isn't like, oh, I did it this, this year and now I'm done. It's continual. Because there's a lot that can come up um, that we didn't realize was there. And, you know, the whole onion analogy is way overused. But it is the layers. And there's things we couldn't see until we got through something else. But what changes is that you move through it faster. And it's being aware of what those fears are, what's come up. In fact, when I talk to somebody who says, well, I don't have any fears, I think, oh, no, (laughs) we got to go deeper in because everybody has stuff that they're working through. It doesn't mean you live from fear. It doesn't mean you are in fear, but you could be anxious about something or you could have something that you're worried about or it could be a small thing. Um, It could be a giant thing. It really depends. But there's stuff that comes up that we always want to be able to work through mindfully and, and to know that there's tools and there's resources available. Um, that's why I, when I can, I like to offer you my books for free because I know that it helps more people. It reaches more people who would not normally have access to them. And that's part of how we help each other. I mean, the way that I feel we're moving through this time is that it really is all hands on deck, everyone helping everyone Everyone's showing up with what they can offer, what they can do, and we all do that differently. And I get the visual of a group hike. I don't know if you've ever been on a group hike, um, but they're they're pretty fun. And I remember when I lived in Paris, um, we did a lot of group things, and we would take the train out to Fontainebleau, where there were some great areas for hiking and walking and just being away from the city. And it was always an international group, um, people from literally – you know, many, many countries speaking many languages. And we would show up, and I always knew that, okay, someone's in charge. I don't know who, but we're following somebody. And we would all start, you know, hiking, and somebody knew the path, and it was this way. And so we would all, I think there was like 25 people, maybe 30, and everyone would be hiking. And, of course, some people would have to stop. 
Um, some people need to rest. Some people need water. Uh, someone who maybe led for a while took a break, and then someone else was the new leader. And maybe whoever was falling behind, uh, some people would stop and wait for them, and everyone, and then they catch back up, and then you keep going. We're on a group hike. And we got to keep going because this is our planet. This is our earth. This is our time to really work with the energies, to end what is not right for the long haul, to understand the energies that serve everyone, not just the few or the elite. Um, you know, there's different names that are given to the elite and, and to the powerful people who are known for running the world. Well, we live here, and what we're going to be experiencing is that transformation of energies of, of those of us who are more consciously aware um, saying, no, this is what we want on the planet. This is how we want to live. This is how we include people or recognize people. This is how there's room for everyone. And it takes the group effort, which is part of the age of Aquarius, right? Group community, connections, the networks, all of us in, all hands on deck, everyone's doing the group hike. And so there are leaders at different times, but of course no one has all the answers. Um, we've also moved away from that phase of things, um, which what they used to call the sage on the stage, you know, that one person who knows all the answers, and if you're lucky you could be in the audience and you would receive the information from them. Well, that's really based on much older practices. Um, that was also based on how the Roman, the Roman Empire grew and, and how um, religions really emerged as being powerful because there was a the belief that only one person has connection to God and that that connection was limited and only for the elite, only for the few. Well, guess what? Now it's like, Everyone understands through their awakening process that they have a connection to God, spirit, source, the universe, whatever they want to call it, or maybe they don't want to call it anything. They, everyone gets to choose what they believe. And so you have this dismantling of power structures and dismantling of what was always accepted. Because when the community rises in consciousness, awareness, and energy, we rise out of fears. We rise out of limitations. We rise out of where we thought we didn't have power. And where we're switching from now until 2027, if not further, is the changeover in power and what that looks like. And that's not going to be easy, and that's not going to be a smooth ride, but it's going to be essential because this is where we live. And if you've listened to this show before, um, you know that I've said, like, you'll look back on that time, this upcoming time in your life, and you'll be like, I was there. I was there for that grand changing over. And let me tell you, grandchildren, <laughs> this is what it was. Like, you'll be sharing with the grandchildren what it was like to live during these times. And that's where we're going. That's what's coming up. And I say this to you with consciousness. I say this to you with the intention of activating your sense of power, your sense of purpose, your sense of I'm here for a reason. And, yes, there are many reasons. There's the reason that, okay, I'm here to evolve my soul. I'm here to enjoy the earth. I'm here to, um, you know, connect with a soulmate, with a kindred spirit, with a twin flame. I'm here to, you know, do my soul mission that I wasn't able to do in other lifetimes. You know, fill in the blanks. There's so many reasons you're here. But you are also here, and it's also why there are billions of people here, is to help the earth ascend, to help the earth be this nurturing, loving, beautiful place for humanity. Because we are a planet of humans. And I know that sounds funny, but there are also forces that want there to be robots and mechanics and other entities. And I know this sounds like a movie. In fact, there was a movie, right? The Rise of the Robots. Is that a movie? Because when we go into Aquarius, when Pluto goes into Aquarius, technology as we know it changes forever. Um, we're moving towards that with virtual reality, AI, artificial intelligence, 
uh, drones are just the beginning. Um, I was just reading about how in 2025 they predict that there will be, you know, many millions of jobs automated, right? The loss of jobs in the workplace, that's already happening. Um, It's like remembering that we are about humans here on this planet. And I try not to laugh when I say that because I think it sounds so funny in a way. But it's true and it's serious. And that's understanding that we are not to be automated. We are not to be neutered or neutralized, that we are here to be the humans. And, you know, humans are wild cards, right? We have our anger. We have our emotions. We have our free will. And it's by our free will that we say what we want on this planet, and it's understanding that it's our consciousness and our power rising that determines that. I had no idea I was going to say all this today, but I'm just trusting that it's a reminder or perhaps planting the seed of what is is necessary to hear. And that, again, I speak from a place of love of us, right, of those of us who are interested in what we can do to be conscious and aware. Um, This isn't about fear. This is about the fact that, okay, you're here on a bigger scale to help humanity and and to help the humans be awesome humans, you know, be a good human (laughs) and to help other people be good humans Um, and that we might see how technology electronics, artificial intelligence, robots, it goes too far. Frankly, I don't, would never want an automatic driving car. I love driving. Like, I don't want that in my life. So no thank you. But it's those kinds of things. Like, what do we give up and what do we give away? And not just in terms of our, our, our power, but even like what do we give away because we think it's cool or it's something that we want to try. But I'm talking about the long term here. You know, what really helps life and, and supports us and what is too much or excessive. There's no one answer. There's no easy answer. But this is some of the stuff that's coming up right now already. And I was just reading on the Wall Street Journal about how many companies don't even want to hire employees. They use vendors and contractors and uh, temporary people. So there's already this shift, right, of of how companies, what they value. And it's all about the bottom line. Then they don't have to pay benefits or insurance. This is just in the U.S. This is not a global. This is not, I'm not talking globally, but just the case study of the U.S., but, of course, globalization is everywhere. So it's understanding where are we going. Well, astrology shows us where we're going. We're going to the extremes of technology, but at what expense? And if we're in the age of Aquarius, where does humanity and true community fit in? And I believe, and I just will share that it, like we're first, and it's how anything supports us at second. And even if that gets flip-flopped, we'll see what we choose and also how the decision-makers change and how that unfolds over the next 10 years as well. So a lot is going to be going on. And what the astrology shows, and right here today, You have enough. You are more conscious than ever. You are more powerful than ever. You have more than you know energetically. uh, We are more connected to our soul's energies than ever before. It's actually what keeps lighting up this planet. The more you do the downloads, the more you receive that energy consciously, that you open up to it, that will continue to infuse you. It will infuse you at a cellular DNA level. It'll support your healing. It'll also support your mind. Okay, so right now I'm getting the image of a brain, your brain, (laughs) your brain receiving sunlight. Maybe do that visual and how the sunlight infuses all 
these different sections of the brain that might not receive light or new energy as needed. And that could be something to just feel if you don't have access to sunlight. I feel it as just visualize that light coming in, into your brain and going into the crevices and all the parts of the brain. You know, the brain is so intricate, but we don't even understand the brain fully. There's so much about the brain that hasn't been scientifically understood, and that's because the brain is cosmic, um, as is the pineal gland. And anything that activates the pineal gland and activates all these other parts of your brain are going to actually help activate more of your energy. And I feel this really strongly right now. So um, you can even imagine this as I'm talking right now. It's just like this golden, powerful light warming your brain, loving it, nurturing it, bringing in more energy and more downloads. And that, okay, this is working with the um, Mercury and Scorpio energies too to help transmute any of those fears, the mental fears that can pop up and can ru- can ruin can ruin the show. I was going to say run the show, but maybe ruin the show is better because it's that sense of the fears taking over, right? Well, this is like you're going to burn them away. Like imagine that sunlight scorching, scorching away, scorching away any of those fears or anything that comes up in the mind. Um, let's see here. I'm going to check a few more things really quick. I have the chart open for right now. And um, we covered the full moon, Venus retrograde, the planets in Scorpio, and how Mars is finally moving through the rest of Aquarius because Mars has been in Aquarius for a long time. You know, through all the eclipses of this summer, Mars was in Aquarius. And actually, that started way back in May. So now Mars is at 13 degrees of Aquarius, and we'll keep moving forward. And this could help bring in the energy, desire, force that you have for the longer term. I feel like it's also activating this age of Aquarius energy with Mars in Aquarius, right? That's why it's been in Aquarius for so long. It's really activating more of our desires for humanity for the long term, what we want to create, what community means. Um, It's about letting people go. We talked about that in July, on July 26, 27, that powerful lunar eclipse conjunct the south node, letting things go, letting people go, allowing yourself to go, let go parts of yourself, well, now Mars and Aquarius is asking you to, to really bring in what vision you want for yourself, for your life, for where you're going and where we are going, because Aquarius is about we. So we've got some big stuff here, as always, you know, never boring in the world of astrology, but I hope this helps you put together some pieces Um, Thank you for all of you who listen to the show and who connect to this work. I also want to say thank you to those who are able to download um, the books that I've offered for free. They all hit number one um, in mental and spiritual healing, which is great just because that means more people are connecting with them. And I hope that those stories are supporting you in what you need right now. So if you want to connect with more of my work, you can find uh, me at ConsciousCoolChic.com. That's my first website since 2011. Or if you are a healer, author, spiritual expert, or guide, and you are building up your spiritual business, go to MollyMcCord.online for more resources, guidance, videos, and tips on how to get your mission work out there and how to make money doing so, because that does matter. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'll see you back here on Monday where we'll talk about the new healing theme. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful week ahead, and I wish you many blessings as well that are beyond what you could expect. So have a beautiful day. Namaste, and I'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.
My heart skips skipping the beach You're not close enough So that space between you and me Let's lose it The way you're dancing Sway into the music Girl, that body and how you move it Every time you cross my mind Girl, I lose it Alexa, play the Country Heat playlist Okay I think you know what you're doing to me you got With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know. All the stars are closer. All the stars are closer. Tell me what you're going to do to me. Confrontation ain't nothing new to me. You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today.